Hello everyone, Elliot Severn here. In my last video, I showed you how I capture images through my telescope in my backyard. Now that is only a small part of the process. After I captured those images, there's a lot of processing I have to do afterwards in order to bring out those objects from the data. So I'm going to show you how I process my astro images tonight. Our target today is going to be an edge-on spiral galaxy called NGC 4565. Here we have a free planetarium program called Stellarium, and I use this to plan my images ahead of time. So here's a panorama of my backyard so I can see where the tree line is. If we zoom in, I can actually see the field of view of my camera sensor through my telescope. And if we look here, we can see NGC 4565. So that's the object that we're going to image. All right, so now that I'm done with my imaging session, here is one of the raw images from the camera. Now there's a lot we have to do to this before it's a finished image. Now you may notice that the background sky is very blue in this image. That has to do with the filter that I'm using. So over here I have an, an image that's taken without a filter. And as you can see, there's a lot of light pollution in this image. So here in Connecticut we have a lot of light pollution. And that causes the background sky color to be this sort of gross orange color in long exposure images. And that sort of washes out the deep sky objects I'm trying to photograph. And so I'm using a special filter called the Optilong L Pro. And it's a very complex filter. It blocks certain colors of light that contribute to urban light pollution and it lets through all the other colors of light which are given off by deep space objects. So it blocks the light from mercury vapor lamps and high pressure and low pressure sodium and atmospheric oxygen and things like that. But it allows through things like oxygen 3, hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta, and sulfur 2 wavelengths of light. And as a result, we end up having this bluish background, but we have way better contrast. So this is an exposure of NGC 4565. It's a 90 second exposure at ISO 3200. And there are a lot of issues with this image that we have to address. As you look around the edges, you see that there is vignetting around the edges. That's what we call it when the edges get darker. It gets brighter as you get in towards the center. We want to flatten out that field. Also, there are some specks of dust on the image. There's dust on the image sensor. Very hard to get that completely clean. And we're going to look at the galaxy in the middle. And we can see the galaxy pretty well, but there's all this digital noise. It looks very grainy. And so we have to take many of these sub-exposures and combine them into one longer exposure. What we're trying to maximize is something called the signal-to-noise ratio. Every time you take a digital image, a digital camera sensor is trying to turn light into an electrical signal. Now, As it does that, there are slight variations in color and brightness detected by the sensor that aren't from the natural light hitting the sensor. And so we want to cancel that out as much as possible. There are several types of images we take that we have to combine after image acquisition. So over here is called a light frame, a picture actually taken through the telescope. And one thing that we subtract from that is a flat frame. This is an image of a blank light source. It can be a clear sky around dusk. I actually use a tablet and I put the tablet on a perfectly white screen and put that screen right on top of the telescope tube. And when I take blank images of this light source, it shows the vignetting around the edges and it shows all the little pieces of dust 
that are in my optics or that are on the camera sensor. And so when I subtract that from the light frame, you end up with a nice flat field. I also have to take something called a dark frame. A dark frame is taken at the same temperature as our light exposures. That's very important because the hotter a camera sensor gets, the more noise it introduces into the image. It's taken with the cap on the telescope so no light can enter the camera and it's exposed for the same amount of time as the light frame so it accumulates the same amount of noise. Now right now it looks completely black but if I stretch this image you're gonna see that there's actually quite a bit of data here. We have some hot pixels we have some nasty color patterns, and we have this amp glow around the edges. So as we enhance our image, all of this nasty stuff is going to show up. And so we need to take all these dark frames to subtract from the light images in order to get a nice photograph. Now I also have to take some bias images, which are a lot like dark frames except they're at the shortest exposure that my camera will do. In this case, they're at one four thousandth of a second. So it's just like a dark frame, but it only captures any noise that's inherent in the electronics of the camera. So as we stretch this, we can see it's less noisy than the long exposure dark frame, but there are some noise patterns that we want to cancel out of our images now in order to calibrate all of our images I use another free program called Deep Sky Stacker. Alright so here I am in Deep Sky Stacker and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the folder that has all the images from last night on it. And So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all the light files these are all my light frames so I took 60 90 second frames, so that's an hour and a half of total exposure time. I'm just going to drag these into Deep Sky Stacker and specify that they're light frames. And I have to do the same for all my calibration frames. So I'm going to take the flats next, and then I'm going to take all my dark frames. And then I have to take all my bias frames, drag those over. All right, so now that I have all my images in here, I'm going to make sure all of them are checked. I'm going to say register checked pictures. And so what it's going to do is it's going to combine my lights and my darks and my flats and my bias frames. And then it's going to find all of the stars and make sure they all line up before it stacks all the images. It's going to align every single frame. And then it's going to assess the quality of each frame. So if I have any frames with elongated stars from tracking errors, it's going to throw those out. And so I'm telling it to select the best 90% of pictures. And so it's going to stack the 54 best frames out of the 60 frames I took. And we're going to say OK. These are all my stacking parameters. Just make sure everything is good. And then it's going to go through the whole process and stack everything. All right, so once Deep Sky Stacker does its thing, it spits out a final stacked image. And this is what it gave us. So now we have a much flatter frame with no vignetting around the edges. We can see NGC 4565 right here. We can see there's a lot less noise in the image, but this isn't the kind of image I would want to post online. We have to do some enhancing to this. Now there's no right way or wrong way to process an image. Astrophotography is just as much of an art as it is a science, but I'm just gonna run through what I do. So even though we calibrated everything, I want to crop this in so we ignore the data around the edges. There might be some stacking errors, there might be some vignetting still. So I'm just going to pick the area immediately around the galaxy. 
and we're going to crop that out. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is stretch out the data a little bit so we can make the background a little bit darker. And right now, this is a 32-bit TIFF file. In order to use most of the editing tools, it actually has to be converted to 16-bit. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to say exposure and gamma. Now this is looking really bad. We got a very bright background, very dark galaxy, but we're going to fix that pretty quickly. So we're going to go to levels. Going to bring down that background. And then I'm going to go and do a curves adjustment. And we're going to pull out the data from the image. And now we're starting to see some good data coming out of this image. Now we still have a very blue looking background sky. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to Levels again. We're going to make that background a little bit darker. I'm going to use this little eyedropper tool here and click on the background and set our gray point. And that's looking much more natural now. Now I do a lot more to this, but we're starting to see some good data. And after tinkering with this for a couple of hours, here is our final image. So that's a basic overview. I didn't go into every detail of what I do. Every image requires some different processing and some different programs. And so if you want to try this yourself at home, if you have the equipment for it, programs that I used are Deep Sky Stacker and Adobe Photoshop. And that's all for today. Everybody have a great week and clear skies.